Hi there, this is Cassie, and I'm here to do another video for my reading that I promised a lot of people. Uh, my first video I talked a little bit about the foundation, I talked a little bit about Salem. What I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to give you some setup of what's happening before we get to that actual reading. And part of what I want to show you here is something that's actually important to the story, the location. I'm going to show you something that I created a while ago for this story. So hold on a sec. I'm going to move you. I'm going to do this without getting you seasick. Hold on. And oh, everything went dark. So I'm going to move you. And I'm going to get you into place. And I'm going to tilt the camera. And now that everything is good, and fine, ah, oh, there we are. There we are. There's my computer. And what you are looking at there is the layout of the Great Hall of Salem. And this is a, something I put together about a year ago, actually a little over a year ago. It's a three-dimensional model that I created by drawing the floor plan. And what we have here is it's a large building from this point up here to this point way down here, the main entrance. Uh, it's about 575 feet. From here to here it's about 300 feet across. At one time this was the entire school. This was the only school building outside of the pentagram and the towers. And people lived here. Uh, the actual dormitories were here and here on the ground floor. And the northern wall of the Great Hall ended like right here. It's expanded with age. And now you have different things. You have the headmistress's office here. You have the library here, which is a huge structure. Uh, there's about 45,000 volumes inside there. You have the security center and the security officer's office. That's where Isis does all her work. And here, one of the more important areas of the school, at least in this story, the hospital. But here is the main dining hall. And this is where all the activity goes. When the headmistress wants to address the students, she does it here. When they have different celebrations, they have it here. When they do their midnight madness on Friday and Saturday nights, they do it here. And in fact, this sofa right here, that's Annie and Carrie's sofa. And we'll talk about that in a second. So. When Annie and Carrie come into the building, they're coming from Cyrano's Tower, which is way off in this direction. They come in through the west entrance, walk through the west transept, through the rotunda, down the west hall, and they actually enter in through the door right there. The dance floor is in this area right here. Huge building, a lot of space, not a lot of students. All right, going to move you back. Hold on. Putting you back, putting you back, putting you back, making sure I hit my marks for my camera, getting my chair back into place, sitting down, and I'll come into focus here in a second. So, the setup we have here for the story is, Annie and Carrie have been sitting on their sofa which Annie thinks of as their sofa. She thinks of it to herself. Uh, she's begun to notice that no matter what time they enter the Midnight Madness, uh, no one's ever sitting in that sofa. No one's ever sitting in that area. And no one will actually come around there until they sit down and they take possession of it. So she doesn't want to jinx any magic that's keeping it theirs. Uh, they've been Prior to sitting there, they were dancing for about 45 minutes. They came over, had a little snack, had a little drink. Professor Erwin Slayton, who's in charge of uh, formulistic magic, a.k.a. magical chemistry. Don't ever call it potions. She doesn't like the P word. She gets very upset. She'll actually get cranky and yell at her partner, uh, Professor Helena Lovecraft because she's kind of old school, and she'll call it potions every once in a while. It gets ugly. Uh, she comes over with Professor Deanna Arrakis, 
who is the school seer. She's in charge of divination and numerology. She has lots of visions all the time. Uh, she's an active visionary, which means she could just be sitting around all of a sudden, boom, I had a vision, and I saw something. But there's very specific rules for uh, precognition in, in this story. And it's not something that you can actually discuss a lot. So they sit for a while. Uh, Professor Lovecraft comes over and grabs Erwin Sladen because every year they have uh, fight teams from Asgardia and Morrigan get together and do a mock battle. Uh, on one side you have the Asgardia Shield Maidens and on the other side you have the Morgania uh, Celtic Women Warriors. This mock battle is usually done with mock swords, but in recent years, they've begun to do things like you know, toss around a few insults, throw some sarcasm in each other's ways, and before you know it, there's pushing and shoving and noses getting broken. So, <laughs> so uh, Helena hauls Erwin off because Erwin's the coven leader of Morrigan, and they leave Deanna there, who's the coven leader of Asgardia, and she'll be along soon, but... Before Annie can say something to Carrie, uh, Emma Nielsen shows up. She's a student from Morgania. She's the one that crashed Carrie uh, when they were racing me earlier in the book. And she crashed Carrie and put him in the hospital and uh, actually almost ripped his, his lower left leg off. But that's a different story. She comes and asks Carrie if he wants to dance because she doesn't really have anyone to dance with. And... Carrie almost tells her no. He, he's almost ready to say that, no, I'm there, I'm here with Annie, I, I can't dance with you. And Annie says, oh, go ahead, go on, go dance with her. I, I want to speak with Professor Arrakis. We have girl things to discuss. Mm -hmm. yeah, girl things. Sure they do. <laughs> they have things to discuss, but it, it, it deals with other things, so. Carrie goes off with Emma, Annie's left sitting on the sofa with Deanna, and that's where the reading will pick up. We'll start there.